One of our viewers uh, sent me an email saying, I watched one of your videos from a YouTube chat. Yeah, that's something we do every month. A lot of fun. Might check in on that. Anyway, uh, watched one of your videos from a YouTube chat where you kept talking about emphasis. I'd love it if you would do a quick tip where you explain what you mean by emphasis and why you think it's so important. That's time to emphasize emphasis. In painting, we create emphasis equally as, uh, well, as you might say, musicians create music, or as we're in a conversation talking like this, if I talk just like that, there's no emphasis at all. But, the but was an emphasis. So, in music, you get, uh, uh, sometimes you get uh, an instrument taking charge is playing louder or uh, than other the other instruments in an orchestra or a band, or you might hear a drum roll. There's all kinds of things where it gets your attention. And that's what the emphasis does. That's why we have the concept of emphasis. It's things we do to get the viewer's attention. Why do we want to get the viewer's attention? So that we can create a painting that allows the viewer's eye to stay within the whole painting and not just get focused on one area and not look at anything else. So, I thought I would use um, Andrew Wyeth's work. There's a number of painters I could use for showing you how they used emphasis. But there are three major ways that, uh, that we painters will create emphasis. And so I think just talk to you about those three ways. They're not the only ways, but they're the most used ways that painters uh, use to create emphasis. So I thought I'd show you that uh, and maybe then help you to get a little more aware about the emphasis you create in your work. Oh, and by the way, it's not about what I think. It's about what works. Uh, so, anyway, that's the side. I have happened to enjoy it as a, an important composing principle. So here we are. There's Andrew Weiss. When we look at Andrew Weiss' work, you walk in the room. If you're ever fortunate enough to see Christina's world in, in real life, do it. Because it's an experience. But this is a, just a photograph reproduction, rather poor one in fact. Nevertheless, it works because his emphasis works. So when you look at it, you see Christina first. Why do you see Christina first? Well, you see her first because she is more highly, one reason, she's more highly contrasted in value than the other things are. Also, she's larger, uh, larger in shape. So. Um, the, the larger uh, images in your painting are more likely to create more emphasis or get more attention or get the attention first, the viewer's attention first, uh, than, than uh, smaller images. But that's not all. One thing that he's done here is he's created the, the building with value contrast, these two buildings value contrast, and the fact that she is looking towards these buildings uh, allows your eye to flow throughout the painting. All right, here's what I mean by value contrast. The strongest value contrast possible is a dark, the darkest dark sitting right next to a lightest light. We have very close, a very close, we're very close to that right here. Contrast gets less the closer values are sit next to each other. You see, this value sitting next to this one does not get the attention as quickly as this value sitting next to this one. But those two, those values have to be together in order for there to be a contrast. Or, uh, well, yes, pretty much together. Now, and you can see here, here is the, you might say, the, the smallest kind of contrast or the closest value contrast we can have when there is just a very slight change a very slight difference between two values, that's called a very close value contrast. Very close value contrasts don't get attention. 
They help the, uh, the eye to flow through things that serve other purposes too. You can see there's a close value contrast, uh, relatively close value contrast right here. There's a greater value contrast here, but the strongest value contrast is here. Now, I want you to watch what your eye does when I do this. You see, now your eye goes here. And some of you might have just gone, ah, <laughs> like that. Because I subduced Christina. There's a slight, a slight image of Christina still there. And, of course, it doesn't make any sense, but I'm giving you a lesson. <laughs> this is a very uh, close value contrast where the difference between the value of her, her dress and this portion of her and her arms uh, as contrasted to the values around her is a very close value contrast. Most likely when I change that picture, your eye went right up here because that's the strongest value contrast that's left now. There's where the emphasis is. I decreased the emphasis here, I placed it there. And then this one's emphasized too, not to the degree that this one is because this one is a little closer value contrast than this one is. But watch now what happens. Now watch carefully. Watch what happens when I do that. I change the emphasis again. Now the emphasis is back to Christina. We have a secondary emphasis right here. We have a barely any emphasis here. Now I've changed this to a close value contrast. So you see there's barely, uh, barely emphasis. So your eye most likely because the most strong most strongly emphasized uh, image in the whole painting is here again. This is probably where your eye goes first. Your eye will notice this, barely notice this. Uh, but you can also see how the emphasis helps to create the, the balance and the unity of the work because now we're only interested in this part. We're not as curious about this part over here. And so it kind of divides the painting, you see, in half like that. Uh, when we do that sort of thing. So that's value contrast. Value contrast is one of the major ways that artists will create emphasis. Another way that artists will create emphasis is through what we call color contrast or hue contrast. And that is the greater distance there is. Let me put this color wheel up to show you what I'm talking about here. The greater distance colors are from each other, which is always directly across from each other. Colors that are, are closer to each other are uh, not quite as contrasted with or from each other than the ones that are the greatest distance. So violet and yellow in color, in hue, violet and yellow are totally contrasted. Neither one of them has any color that the other one has on it. And so those two side by side are really going to emphasize each other. You see the same thing here with red and green, orange and blue, and all around the wheel, the traditional wheel, uh, we see that relationship. That's the way hue, the hue of the color, which is the hue is the, is the identity of the color. That's the way hue behaves. So in this painting, or this is not a painting, this is a photograph. In this photograph, the red shirt, uh, probably it may, the, the, the child's face may, you may have gone there first because of a strong value contrast there, but your eye catches the red shirt. Your eye notices the red shirt. Now, I want you to close your eyes if you're willing to. Close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you. Now open your eyes. Can you see now that your eye goes here first? Your eye is not caught as much by the green shirt. The green shirt has a close hue relationship to the other colors in the background. Uh, it's a slightly different shade of green, but it still has that hue relationship very close. The closest hue relationships are analogous to each other or the same. And so you see the hue relationship between green and blue-green, which is what we have here. That Those are the closest that two hues can be to each other and still be different. As just like the closest two values can be to each other and still be different is this right here. So now the hue contrast is another, just hue itself, that characteristic of color, is another way to create emphasis. So if you want to subdue your emphasis throughout and you have it relatively interesting, um, if you then 
uh, take away all hue contrast or mostly hue contrast so that even the blue is not as contrasted because the relationship between blue and green on the color wheel. You see where that is? Right there. So it's analogous to the green so it's not as contrasted. It just blends in so your, your eye will go here. Here's where the emphasis is. It's where that strong value contrast is. And you might say hue plays a role there to get your attention too because of the uh, uh, the warm or the orange colors, red and orange colors in his face, red being a complement of green. So those two, the the hue contrast, uh, the hue contrast and the value contrast, are two major ways artists create emphasis. And now there's a third way that artists create emphasis that has to do with color, and that is saturation contrast. That one's always a hard one for people to get a handle on. When you look at these two photos, I bet your attention goes here, but I bet your attention goes here first. Why is that? Because that cut, that red is more saturated here than any portion of the bird here. When you look at this picture, your, your, your attention goes to almost to the whole bird. Your attention doesn't go to that beak because that beak is the same saturation, also the same hue. Well, in this case, it's more about saturation. It's the same saturation as the rest of the, of the all the other the feathers on the bird itself. But here, the saturation is much stronger. Now, here's how that works. And artists use this principle an awful lot: the saturation contrast. You might also call it the intensity. Intensity, intensity, and saturation mean the same thing. Also, the word chroma is often used to talk about the the saturation of hue. Uh, I like, I, I sort of use the word intensity or saturation, and I'm using saturation more and more these days because it makes more sense. But here's how that works. Now, if you'll look, I'm just going to place this right here. Let's just pull it right over in here. Yeah, right over in here. Now, if you'll notice in this bird, sat, by saturation we mean how neutralized a hue is. In other words, how much of that hue's complement does that hue contain? Uh, and, and so the more complement, the more of its, in this case, the more blue that the orange contains, or the more uh, blue-green that a red-orange contains, or the more green that a red contains, go all the way around the wheel like that. Uh, the more of this that is in this color, the less saturated it is, and the less attention it's going to get. All right, let me just... I'm going to twist this around just a little bit more. So I'm going to register this right in here on the reds. Now you can see this, even, even this part is almost gray. It's almost this saturation right here. What we see in this bird, the feathers of this bird, you see a little bit, see a little bit of that hue popping through right in here. And that is this hue right in here. Uh, and you can see just a little bit of that, but that's the saturation. And when you have a contrast of saturation, uh, when, what you, when you have a fully saturated hue, and it's side by side with a neutral, the neutral is going to emphasize. They're going to emphasize each other the same way as value contrast. Uh, the lights will emphasize the darks, the darks will emphasize the lights. In the same way that with hue contrast, one hue will emphasize another. So the closer they are to each other, the closer these these uh, saturations are to each other as they move up the saturation scale, uh, then the more contrast they're going to have with each other. So that if you look at this beak right here, you see it's about this saturation. The way the photograph shows it, it's about the saturation range right here. And you can see then a little bit of that uh, red popping into it right here. You can see this the saturation range right here. A lot of that we can see has has lost its saturation completely in in the bird's feathers. But uh, if I drop that down, and, oh, and, and that well, that explains it visually, it explains why this is where your eye goes first because that's the that's the one that is furthest away in saturation from everything else. So there's not really a strong value contrast, or there's not really a, a strong hue contrast. Uh, and so your eye goes here because of that saturation contrast. Here, you see most of it, most of this holds the 
degree of saturation that this does. So if I put the wheel up there, what you can see is a very slight change in saturation where you do see it, where these feathers tend to move into a little bit more shadow. You do see a little, there you go, right there, a little change in the saturation, but it's very close. So this saturation being very close means that we, we don't see that as a contrast. So our eye will kind of blend the whole thing. And so therefore, when we look at this one, our eye does not go straight to the beak necessarily. It kind of goes, it's a, a wider range of, of emphasis. This is emphasized in this space because the space behind it is totally neutral. And you go to this one, we see the bird, but we can't help but notice that red beak. That is emphasis. So those are three ways that an artist, a uh, painter, can create emphasis in a painting. And that degree of emphasis is going to guide the eye. It's going to pull the eye's attention. So anything that gets the eye's attention is going to help guide the eye throughout the whole painting. And that's what we call visual movement. So that's emphasis. I think play with the idea of emphasis a little bit so that you can understand it too. And when, you look, when you're looking at uh, paintings done by other artists, look for where the emphasis is. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.